Welcome back to the Lagoon of Mystery, my home tiki bar in Central Texas for another moment of tiki. Tonight's episode is a little awkward. Um, the project that I'm going to be documenting is an actual build, which I know I don't have that many of, but uh, you know, I get around to it on occasion. I actually began working on this back in January, but by the way I work, you know, I devote a little time to a project then get distracted by another project and then kind of juggle things around. Here it is, the beginning of summer, and I'm looking to try and push through and get it complete. Um, because of the complexity and relative uh, degree of ambition in this project, it inspired me to start video documenting this, uh, an idea which eventually became a moment of tiki. Uh, I included uh, both uh, cell phone footage and DSLR footage. Um, unfortunately, almost all of that was lost a couple of months ago when I had a hard drive crash. So the initial build is kind of complete, the first stages of it. So I'm going to kind of have to pick up halfway through in media res, as it were. But I still think that you can get uh, some significant or at least worthwhile information from watching me kind of flail along. Uh, the good news is, for me anyway, you don't get to see my halting first attempts and mistakes that I made, uh, which made me kind of look foolish, uh, more foolish than I normally do. So you'll see kind of the halfway result and we'll carry that on through the end. And hopefully once all is said and done, everything will go up, install properly and look good and at least semi-professional. So let's get to it, shall we? This is the far end of the Lagoon of Mystery. My booth that I salvaged from a closed Fuddruckers in Houston, uh, jade tiles that I purchased from the people in Florida who supply jade tiles to everyone from uh, Max's South Seas Hideaway to countless other home bar builds. Uh, bamboo combs I cut and harvested myself and flame treated. Uh, it's a pretty cool back corner of the tiki bar. There's just one problem look. This is the other side of the bamboo and jade screen. It's exposed directly west to the western sun, uh, but more importantly, you can look and see the roof line. There's only a narrow one foot overhang to protect it from wind and rain and everything else. That means whenever we have rain or wind or any kind of storm, all the water gets sloshed into, blown into the tiki bar. Um, and I put a lot of effort into that booth. Uh, the sun, the rain, that's uh, very problematic. It's um, wreaking havoc on my perishable materials. And no matter how much I coat them with weather sealant, they're still decaying really quickly. So. The solution, as I see it, is to build an awning to go across here to project out to offer shelter, an extended roof space to prevent rain from going in primarily, but also to offer a little additional protection from the uh, sun and the UV radiation. So that's the project. The story thus far, to build the awning for the opening on the far side of the Lagoon of Mystery. First of all, I took a ruler or tape measure and measured how wide the opening was that I had to cover and shelter. Uh, that was about eight and a half feet across. So with that information, I sketched out a rudimentary, uh, I wouldn't go so far as called it the blueprint, but a guideline. Um, to direct me in my cuts and, and construction. The top beam and this front beam right here are 101 inches across. 
that will cover the opening. And the backmost beam is uh, 121 inches long. That will give me a, a, a tapered um, uh, overhang so as to ensure that less water and other stuff get into it. Uh, the beams right here, the support struts uh, to hold the rain cape, the thatch, these are all about 31 inches across. It's the whole shebang is 24 inches deep and 20 inches high. I secured all these with uh, paracord, uh, Japanese bamboo lashing, and put this all together with decking nails. So that brings you up to speed. Let's get on with this project. So here we are on the first day of summer and as par for the course in Texas, it is steamy, humid, upper 90s, 90% 90 humidity. I'm drenched with sweat and I've only been out here for a couple of minutes. Uh, this is a true taste of the tropics without the beautiful beaches and everything else that goes along with it. So I guess it uh, makes sense for me to be working on the awning for my far end of the Tiki Bar again. As you can see, since January when I started working on it, I have the main structure established. I have the uh, main beams, uh, the struts that connect it and everything. But the one problem that I have at this point is that everything is connected at right angles with uh, these decking screws. Now the screws are strong, they're not going to allow shearing out, but any cross force allows the posts, the beams, the struts to pivot along that screw as if it were a joint or an axis. What I'm going to do to correct this is add some diagonal support struts in here. And what that is going to do is set up a diagonal brace which prevents the other screws and joints from pivoting. And I'm going to do a couple of those and see where we are after that, but I think that's probably going to give it uh, a more rigidity that will um, work out best in the long run. So let's get to it. As always, you gotta drill the pilot holes in the bamboo. If not, it will split. Now, to do that's the pilot hole to connect the strut. Now we are going to on the bit with which to drill strut in. And there we go. And now to attach the bottom end of the strut. Okay, so I've drilled my pilot hole. This is the end piece that's going to go on this end to stabilize things. Now, my bamboo frame is secured by these decking screws, and that's a pretty strong hold. There's a lot of them, but I don't want 
the structural integrity of uh, my awning to be entirely dependent on screws. Uh, any one fails, uh, it's not uncommon. So I want to reinforce this with a more traditional approach that is lashing, uh, specifically Japanese square lashing, uh, which is historically used to tie bamboo structures together. For this I'm using paracord because that was the most readily available and affordable. I knew it wouldn't uh, necessarily rot. Now it does have uh, susceptibility to um, UV degradation, but this is all going to be sheltered underneath the awning, so I'm hoping that it will not deteriorate. Uh, it is nylon, and when you cut it, the fibers are loose and it can unravel, so I'm going to melt the end by just applying a little bit of heat. and that will fuse the end so it will not unravel. This is uh, plastic essentially so you don't want to breathe any of the fumes. Oh, it's a very small amount of fumes. And also when it melts uh, sometimes it can drip uh, the drips, the little liquid bits of plastic are very, very hot, so you do not want them landing on your leg. Um, ask me how I know. But you have two fused ends of this and you can begin the lashing. And there we have it. This is going to add additional strength to this joint. We have the screw holding it on primarily, and each one of these joints is going to have a uh, lashing holding it too. So that should make it doubly strong and hopefully stand up to any strong winds, uh, gusts, anything that would normally pull it apart. At least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Now because I've never done this before, I'm trying some things that kind of sound good on paper but might not work out too well in real life. Uh, because I don't know how much rain the rain cape will deflect from the top portion here, I'm pretty sure it'll deflect a considerable amount into the tiki bar below, but onto the support structure itself, I was concerned that uh, rainwater would collect in the open ends of the bamboo up here and contribute to rot, and thus reducing the lifespan of the awning frame. So essentially I got uh, some of this window, door, siding, and sealant. Um, it's beige color to more blend in with the bamboo. It's got silicon in it. It's uh, UV resistant, waterproof. And basically I filled in all of the open ends of the bamboo that's facing upward that could potentially collect water. Um, whether or not that works out in the long run and prolongs the life of my awning, I don't know. But because this has uh, bamboo and latex, I mean not bamboo, but um, silicon and latex, it's flexible. So as the bamboo uh, shrinks and expands, as all wood does in the varying degrees of heat and humidity over my Texas summers and winters and seasons. Hopefully this will expand and contract with it and reduce the number of cracks and uh, the amount of water that penetrates the bamboo and contributes to rot. So fingers crossed, we'll see if that works or not. This arrived from Forever Bamboo about a month ago. Well, it's not as dense as I was expecting, but I'm still uh, still optimistic. 
We'll see how this works. <clears throat> I sincerely hope I'm not ruining this. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Main main rain cape there. For the angled ends of the awning, I measured and cut a section of thatch in half. Then, as a viability test, wired a piece of that thatch into place using, if I remember correctly, 14 gauge galvanized electric fence wire. To attach the awning to the side of the house, I decided to use galvanized pipe grip ties used to build fences. I spray painted them to better blend with the thatch and the bamboo. It was time to see if my measurements were accurate with a test fit of the bamboo frame in place against the house. Once in place, I marked the location of the center pipe grip tie. With the center pipe grip tie's location marked, I drilled pilot holes, then attached it using weatherproof outdoor screws. Siding alone is not strong enough to support the awning, but there are back-to-back two-by-eight boards immediately behind the siding to anchor it. It's finally starting to look like something. After mounting the frame onto the center pipe grip tie, I then installed the remaining pipe grip ties. The right section of the bamboo frame ends against a stucco column. This requires some improvising to attach. With the bamboo frame firmly installed, it's time to wire the remaining side pieces of thatch into place. The big rain cape is awkward and unwieldy to work with. That's why I have to clamp it into place. It's really big and wants to slide off the bamboo frame, so it'd be impossible to work with otherwise. All that's left is to wire the rain cape into place from underneath. I have one last step to do before I can consider the thatch awning finished, and that is uh, put uh, flame retardant on it. If I was smart, which clearly I'm not, I would have done this when I had the thatch laid out nice and neatly on the ground where it would be easy to get to. But I got ahead of myself yesterday with my rush to actually get it up and completely forgot about it. But when you have a thatch that is natural, it's extremely flammable. And so it is wise beyond all measure to put uh, flame retardant on it, whether it's uh, this is no burn, there's flame stop, there's a whole bunch of different brands out there. Uh, whatever you do, follow the instructions and make sure you coat the thatch, the flammable thatch uh, completely because especially if you're going to have open flame tiki torches, candles, anything like that around, or people smoking cigarettes, uh, just better to be safe than sorry because this will go up like a Roman candle and that'll ruin anyone's tiki party. And here it is, my thatch awning all finished, fully installed, and in place. I'm really kind of excited about this. I didn't expect to get it finished yesterday, especially since there was a series of rainstorms that kept blowing in and chasing me back into the house because it was too wet and windy to work. On the bright side, even though I didn't have it entirely tied down and installed completely, the thatch kept the wind and the rain out from the tiki area. I was really, really thrilled with this. Anytime we got showers coming through in the past because of the light overhang, the shallow overhang, uh, the, the booth and the table were just puddled with water once the showers passed. None of that was an issue this time. Uh, even the thatch being thin as it was, it just really, really worked well to keep the rain and the wind from just splattering everything inside. So I'm extremely happy about that. It's been cloudy for a few days, so I haven't really seen what kind of effect this is going to have on the western setting sun shining directly in there with UV. But I really have no doubt that it's going to be just as effective with that. So on all counts, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. The frame is sturdy underneath, the thatch is secure on there, it's not blowing away, it's really stable. I'm very excited and this is one project that I embarked on where I really didn't know what I was doing, kind of making it up as I went along, turned out 
better than I could have expected, better than I certainly expected, more than I hoped for. So once again, I've shown you how that even a uh, nincompoop like me can put together something that is not only pretty cool looking, but it's also functional. So whenever you're getting a wild idea in your head for your tiki bar, don't say that that's too difficult, that you can't do it, because if I can do it, you can do it. Until next time from the Lagoon of Mystery, aloha.